Joe Sidroth here. Welcome to my world, where it's naturally supernatural. My guest went to heaven and had the warrior's dance downloaded into her spirit. It's a totally different paradigm and revelation on defeating the devil. Are you ready to defeat the devil? Sid Roth has spent over 40 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid for this edition of It's Supernatural. Uh, I have my guest, Donna Werner, here. And Anna, uh, you are so free in the spirit. Well, I'll tell you something that excites me. There's such a misunderstanding, even when you hear the word spiritual warfare. Yeah. You take this whole realm of spiritual warfare into a whole new dimension. In fact, you call it dances, even though it's not necessarily you're dancing, but you use the word dances. Why? Well, you know, when we think of spiritual warfare, I don't think we think of it in terms of that, right? We think of going into war as in like, you know, we've got our combat boots on, yeah. our sword drawn, we're going to like take the enemy down. But here's the thing. I had this vision. I was taken up into heaven and I was going through a really hard season and I was taken up. And when I was there, I had this bridal gown on and I was wearing these really old, worn out tennis shoes. And I was running towards Jesus. And I was out of breath, which I think is how most of us feel when we're in warfare. We feel tired out, wearing down, weary, you know. And Jesus, he looked at me and he said, no, 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 Anna. And he said, listen, take these. And he gave, and I looked in his hands and there's these beautiful ballerina dancing slippers. And he said, put these on and worship. So I put on the slippers, I took my old sneakers off, put on the slippers, and then I started dancing. And as I danced and I worshiped, there was uh, different colors were released in the throne room there in heaven. And I realized we have more power when we combat the enemy through victorious worship than the placement of being in the posture of defeat. That is not the correct posture to do war with the enemy. Oh. You have such a wonderful example. It's a difficult time. Uh, you were in Africa with your husband, mm -hmm. and he was dying. He had gotten a blood infection. It was staph blood infection. His stomach was bleeding, and he had a fever uh, that was really high. And the doctor said to us, you know, Anna, he, they pulled me aside and said, if, if he doesn't get better and turn a corner soon, you're going to have to go back to the States. So I went into the little kitchen net and I prayed and my prayer wasn't filled with faith. I said, dear God, what am I going to do? I said, God, show me what to do. Help me, help me. And he said, Anna, go in there and sing the name of Jesus over Sam, my husband. So I went in the little room and I said, Sam, I'm going to sing the name of Jesus over you. I know it doesn't make sense, but that's what I know to do. And he, he said, oh, okay. I said, that's good enough. That's an okay. So I put my hand on his forehead that was boiling hot and I sang and I sang Jesus. And as I sang, just the name of Jesus, that's all I sang, the fever went down. It got cooler on his head and I went, oh. It's working. <laughs> so then I put my hand on his chest, which was still boiling hot, and I sang the name of Jesus. And, and then it broke there. And I kept going, you know, all the way down to his feet. And then finally, the fever broke. He sat up in bed and he said, I'm hungry. <laughs> I went, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I love your teaching of, and, and she breaks it. She calls these dances. Uh, because you're from a, and, and I hope you got this, because you are fighting from a position of a victor. One of your dances you call the dance of the unoffended heart. What is that? Yeah, um, I, I had this vision where God took me up and I saw all these horses running and they were really wild and beautiful. But then I looked and I saw there was this one horse that was really struggling. 
And so as I got closer, I looked and I saw it had a muzzle over its mouth and on the muzzle was written the word offense. And then I heard the Lord's voice say, uh, offense blocks my flow of my spirit. And I thought, that's the first time I'd ever heard that. And then he showed me that, and then I got to, it, it's like he showed me, and then I was tested with it. Because we had a car that was gifted to us when we came back from overseas. We didn't have a vehicle, and someone gave us this beautiful car. It was our present from God. And we're like, thank you, Jesus. And then it was stolen. <laughs> it was stolen right out from our driveway in the middle of the night. And I'll never forget that moment. We woke up, and we realized it had been stolen, and we were crying, and God, what are we gonna do? And, and then we grabbed hands in the living room, and I heard the Lord's voice say, I'm testing your response. And I'll never forget, we grabbed hands and we said, we're gonna choose to not be offended, choose not to be offended no matter, no matter what, what happens, God. But this is what I mean by the unoffended heart, is. When God, if anything gets taken away, that we'll say, we love you, Jesus, no matter what. Yeah. My faith in you is not going to be shaken, no matter what comes. It won't be wavered. It won't be moved. Because I trust that you are a good daddy, and you still will take care of me, no matter what it looks like right now. We're also dealing with something called lies from the enemy. Yeah. <laughs> It's, um, this affects being offended, it affects us even at the cellular level. You have been able to look into someone's body's cells. What do you see happening? Yes, I was praying for a woman one day and um, she came and asked for prayer and she had a lot of things going on actually, it was cough, respiratory thing, back pain, joint pain. You name it, you know, she had a lot going on. And, but what happened is, as I was praying, I saw this image, I saw a blood cell. And uh, written across the blood cell, I saw the word uh, trauma, written like that. And so I said to her, I stopped and I said, you know, I'm just gonna ask you something. I feel like the Lord showed me something. I could be wrong, but just tell me. And I said, do you, did you go through some kind of trauma as a child when you were really young? And, um, and she said, yes, yes. And I said, you know, actually the Lord showed me about that. But what I see is that when that trauma happened, a lie came in that somewhere along the way that you believe that you're not good enough. And um, I believe this sickness, all this stuff you're experiencing is all attached to that lie. She started crying. We ended up walking her through, repenting for her coming into agreement with the lie that I'm not good enough. And as she broke that off, then she was physically completely healed of everything that she came in there with. So this thing about lies is so important when we're in warfare like I do this all the time I actually every day I ask the Lord practically I say Jesus is there any lie that I'm believing right now that's not of you because when you can get rid of that lie you use a phrase and you're gonna love this phrase Anna refuses to be a landing strip for the devil. When Jesus, he prayed for that man to be, you know, in, and all the demons came out of the man. And then the demons asked, he's like, can we go into those pigs? And when I look at that scripture, I see that demonic activity, it looks for somewhere to land. And so I'm like, I am not going to be a landing strip for the enemy. I'm going to keep myself clean. I'm going to repent of sin if I have any sin in my life, first and foremost. And then I ask the Lord, is there a lie I'm believing that's not of you? And if Holy Spirit brings it up, I say, I break my agreement with that lie in Jesus' name. Now, God, show me truth because we've got to get truth set back. You know, you pull out the lie, you gotta got something to put it back in. So what's the truth, God? And then he shows me and I say, now this is mine and I claim it and I declare it over myself. You know, one of the greatest and one of the most overlooked weapons is the dance 
of joy. Are you ready for joy next? Okay. Now you're going to love this next dance. And remember, when she uses the word dance, it's literally a strategy from victory. You know, many of my guests provoke me to such jealousy, like <laughs> Anna. Uh, I said, Anna, do you ever see body parts hanging in the air that, that God wants to put into some of the people in the congregation? And so, yeah, I see that. You know, like, yeah, isn't that normal? <laughs> Tell me about in Washington, D.C., that body part you saw. Uh, we were praying, and then suddenly I looked up, and I saw these kidneys fall from the sky. And so I grabbed them. Now, this sounds weird, but I grabbed them. You see why she provokes and, me to jealousy. <laughs> and so I held them, and I say, who here needs kidneys? And then slowly but surely, this woman came forward, and she said, oh, that's me. And I said, oh, I've got him. Uh, can I pray for you to be healed uh, from whatever's going on? She said, yes, yes, yes. So I prayed and I said, in Jesus' name, I pray for the creative miracle of new kidneys. And I just released him. And then she was completely healed. And how I know she was healed is she no. said, God, I want to test this. So she went and had, she went to drink gallons of water, which she could never hold her mm. urine before without pain. And she was completely healed. It was amazing. <laughs> One of my favorite dances is the dance of joy. Tell me about that. I, th I think joy is one of the most overlooked weapons we have against mm -hmm. the enemy. And, um, you know, there's that scripture in Psalm 23 that says, I sit at the banquet table in the presence of my enemies. And I think, Man, and then in Psalms also in 16, it says, in your presence is fullness of joy. So if we're going to sit at the banquet table where there's a feast before us in the middle of our enemies and going through warfare, we can actually get full of joy. And when we get filled of, because his presence, we get filled of his presence, we get filled of joy, it actually shifts the atmosphere. I've seen this personally Come, I've seen it in, in action because I pray for people sometimes and said, I have to tell them, I'm not laughing at your situation. I'm just going to warn you when I get full of his presence, I giggle. I just start laughing. I said, please don't be offended. <laughs> <laughs> but just like I'm laughing now, please don't be offended, but I just feel his goodness and I know that he's going to heal you. So I just get full of joy. And what happens is then they get healed and I'm like, praise God. So this thing about joy is so important. But see, we don't think about warfare like that. We don't think, oh, we could sit up in his banquet table. People ask me, how do you, you know, how do you do that? How do you sit up at his mm -hmm. banquet table? And I say, you know, now this seems simple, but I take the scripture and I take it and put it into action. It says Philippians 4, 8, it says, meditate or dwell on the good things, the pure things, the righteous things. You know, I take that and I sit and I go, okay, I think about Jesus. Jesus, you're good. I love you, God, because you're sovereign. Father, you're, so what happens as I'm doing that? I'm not, I'm no longer thinking about what I'm going through. The hard things, the testing stuff I'm going through, I just think about Him. And as I think about Him, suddenly things start to get lighter, right? And it's like then you can find yourself right up feasting in His presence. The banquet table is all about feasting in the presence of God. Give me an example of uh, the person paralyzed in Africa. My husband and me, we actually we're on our way back to the States and we ended up in South Africa and we were visiting a church and there was a man that was paralyzed there and he had a, he par, he had a partial movement in just his neck about like that, but everything else was paralyzed and he was in a wheelchair. And so I waited to the end of the service. This church, by the way, didn't move like in signs and wonders and believe in miracles. So mm -hmm. I waited to the end and I said, excuse me, uh, could we pray for you? Would that be okay? And he said, yes, please. I've been waiting for somebody. So <laughs> I said, oh, praise God. So we started praying and we prayed a long time. 
just to encourage everybody who works in healing ministry that says, why isn't the instant miracle? You know, it wasn't like the miracle came right away. Okay, so we prayed. I, I have noticed that a lot of people will pray once and if it doesn't happen, they just kind of walk away. But Anna is saying, no, this belongs to you. I'm going to hang around until it happens. That's what I hear you saying. Yes, and I do. I really do hang with people as they, you know, when mm -hmm. I minister until they get their breakthrough, you know. So we were praying for him and we're praying and quoting scripture and everything. And then I start laughing. Oh, it hits me. And I, <laughs> I said, I'm so sorry. <laughs> like, I'm not laughing because you're paralyzed. I'm sorry. I, and I have to apologize and said, I'm just so full of the presence of God. I feel so happy. <laughs> and I'm like, he loves you. And I'm laughing. Well, what happened is the presence just went on him. Like I could see now as a seer, I can see when there's impartation and it just fell. And, and he started and then he's like, oh, and he starts laughing and he's like, oh, and I'm like, your neck just moved. Did you see that? And he goes, I did. So then, then Jesus, I heard Holy Spirit say, Anna, sing over him. And I'm like, oh no, like I'm not a professional singer, you know, but I said, okay, um, excuse me, I'm going to sing over you now. And he said, okay, what? Let's bring it. Whatever you got, bring it. You know, he was open. So then I just started singing over him and he got completely healed. He was completely healed. <laughs> story and um, it happened to be his birthday no we didn't know that and so he went got running out of his wheelchair into the church boy and said I've been healed I've been healed miracles of God are real miracles of God are real and it's my birthday it was amazing oh, oh no when we return I'm going to ask Anna to sing Jesus over you and if you can bear it, I will sing his Hebrew name, Yeshua. And this one new man, Jew and Gentile, one in Messiah anointing, I believe it's going to release supernatural joy and miracles. And maybe Anna will see a few body parts for you. Be right back. Uh, yeah, you know, I'm here with Anna Warner. I believe that if you will sing to the people that are watching in their homes, in the studio audience, if you will sing just the song you sang for your husband when he was so critical, you thought he was dying, or the doctors said that, you just sang Jesus. If you will sing that over people, I believe they'll be healed. And then I will sing in uh, uh, Hebrew, the same thing that you sing, and then I believe you'll start functioning in words of knowledge. I'm excited you're going to sing with me. Well, I th I, you, you, you haven't heard me yet, but that's okay. <laughs> okay, Stan, do me a favor. I can't believe I did this, by the way. <laughs> me neither. <laughs> uh, do me a favor and stand to your feet, please. Stand on your feet, really. I want to just, just be in the posture of, of receiving. All right, thank you, Lord. Father, I just thank you for your fire that's falling in this place, God. Father, we pray and we thank you for the freedom that we have in you. By your stripes, we've been healed. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yeshua, 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 your King, your Lord. Yeshua. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Now, somebody, uh, somebody that is either here in the audience or you're watching this now, I just get this word of knowledge for you right now. I hear the Lord saying that when I spoke that word earlier about, uh, I shared that story of a lady that had felt like 
um, she wasn't good enough. I saw that word somewhere through the media that that's for you. And what that is, is you're actually up against a performance spirit where you feel like you've got to perform for your papa, daddy's love, and you are chronically ill. There's chronic illness, stuff that's going on in your body and nobody can touch it. No doctor understands it. I see like autoimmune problems. I see um, chronic illness, like respiratory infection that never goes away, it just comes back all your life. And no matter what you do, you can't get rid of this thing. In Jesus name right now, I pray for your breakthrough in your healing. Father, I command that performance spirit to now go. You're gonna feel something lift off of you. Even in this very room, you're gonna feel it lift off of you right now. Performance spirit has been broken. And say this with me. If you would trust me, just repeat after me. I break my agreement, I break my agreement. with the lie with the lie. That, I'm not good enough. that I'm not good enough because I'm a son or daughter, because I'm a son or daughter of, the King of, Kings. of the King of Kings. Now look at me. He loves you just as you are. You don't have to be perfect. You're free. You're absolutely free. You're free. You have the victory over this and your body has now been healed in Jesus name. Now I just get this word Sid about this thing. When you get your healing and your freedom, it can't come back. Now when it tries, you can stand up in victory and say it. No, I've gotten my healing in the name of Jesus. So you cannot come back. The door has been closed. God is raising us up like that so that when we think, ah, oh, because often people get their healing, right? Their breakthrough. And then it's some, the enemy tries to come back right. at us. And then we get discouraged and we move right back to where we were before. But hey, listen, that's when it's time we got to rise up. No, that cannot come back in Jesus name.